Hey class, welcome back. All right, so today is kind of an overview day. I really wanted to guys touch base with you guys and talk to you about Premiere and shooting a video and editing a video and all this kind of stuff that goes into this. Today we're going to be looking at how I edit a video and the things that I'm looking at. I'm not trying to scare you, but this is the, the thing that I stare at my screen at and I'm analyzing a lot. So looking at this video that I'm editing, I'm editing a video I did uh, last week, which was over photo manipulation through draw stay effect and where we're actually minimizing that same same image inside of something over and over and over again. This whole project, uh, again, just using the standards from New South Wales, I'm going to continue working on this. So next week, just so that you can see some of the stuff that I'm working in as I'm going through and I'm having to make these individual changes, this stuff takes a lot of time. So my rule of thumb is for every video that you shoot, if it's a 10 minute video that you've shot, it's going to take you 30 to 40 minutes to edit. Uh, now that's my process. I take forever just because I want to go through. I want to make the, sure the ums, the pauses, the little breaks in audio, those are all taken care of and cleaned up. Notice how as I'm going through and you see me scrubbing, how many times I'm cutting that line at the bottom, that light green, where you can see the waveform of my voice. And I'm actually having to go through and tweak every t every little bits of those audios. Now as I'm doing that, then I have to go back and put in what of the video that I'm making as far as like, I want you guys to follow me on Instagram, my end screen, my music, my audio any specific cells of imagery that I want to find in that image and adding that stuff in. So trying and having a collection, a set of stuff in there for that as I'm working. When we're making these videos and we're trying to do something else for our students to have another medium for them to learn by, they need to see a process. They need to see how these things are created, how these things are done so that they understand why they're making what they're making. I put in standards. I want to try and find as many visual elements that will tie into whatever I'm trying to say all at the same time. So as if you guys want to get into this and make these kinds of videos, these are really good um, things to see because you understand how this stuff works. And it's not hard until you've done it. It's not really hard after you've done it 200 plus times as, as many videos as I have. And but but it and it does get easier the more times you use it. But it is very cumbersome when you first get going on it. All right, so let's break down some of the scenery that you see in the screen here. So you have several different panels. We're starting on the top left. That is your monitor, your where you track everything. It's where you watch all your footage back. You figure out what you're going to cut, what you're going to keep, where I'm checking for specific audio levels. It's also your effects panel where you can go in and you can fine tune and put in all your keyframes as they pop in there. The next one over that is your source monitor. The source monitor is where we watch all of our footage as we're making. This is what's going to be the final product, what we're going to see. You definitely want to be able to see if there's any blank spots in there because you don't want your scene dropping out halfway through filming because it's just like what just happened to the footage uh, there's nothing there now that's where you'll also add in all of your text if you're adding in text elements i'm adding it into the source monitor section but i'm editing it into in the effects panel so i'm going back in i'm changing up where it's located different font sizes i uh, don't want it in the center off to the left after that you have the effects panel for me this is way mine is set up your panels can kind of are all going to be similar in the stuff that you have access to but how you set it up is is really up to you and right now i've got my source monitor kind of taking up three quarters of the overall screen on my page on the one on as i'm editing this because i need to see what i'm talking about as i'm as we're going so you can move these things around it's just like a drag the window around here and it changes the shape of everything so make it work to yourself uh, but the effects panel where you have your graphics layouts, your sounds, your color panels, uh, any specific favorites that you use. I use Lumetri a lot. I use fading to black or cross dissolves or basic transitions that I'm going to use in my in my footage. And that's just because it makes life a lot quicker for me. Jumping down to the second row there, there at the bottom, you have your media browser, your media center where all of your footage is stored. I make several folders in mine. I have a folder for video, I have a folder for audio, I have a folder for different pictures that I'm going to splice in there and just have these stills all of that's gonna be stored in there try and do a folder system to make it as easy to find everything as possible it makes your life a lot easier and then the main body of where you're gonna spend so much of your time is the next panel after that which is your timeline your timeline is all basically the same things you're looking at that strip of footage and stacks of audio and video visual elements and you're trying to and you're just looking at this giant mess of stuff don't be scared by it because it, it, it's one of those things where once you start doing it several times it does become easier i will say it off the bat if you're do if you jump into premiere you jump into one of these things with no experience you're going to be swimming in the deep end of the ocean
ocean, like middle of the Atlantic in a hurricane. It's really difficult. I'm not going to deny that. However, at the same time, there's a thousand tutorials online. Most of you guys, if you watch my videos, I tell you to shoot me something in the comments. Some of you have my email address. Send me an email. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. You guys know where to find me. I'm happy to help however I can because, hey, we're all part of a learning community and I want to teach you guys as well as learn stuff from you guys at the same time so it, it's all a community thing so get in there get your hands dirty and, and make something fun when i started out i started out with windows media maker where that was a really low version of this software it was basically a glorified powerpoint with more video tools and that that's really what it was the thing about premiere and why i want to push you guys getting into this substance this kind of uh, editing program is because it allows you to do things three times faster than what i was doing initially when i was doing this so like having an audio having just one audio track available to me in windows movie maker made rendering and making several passes at a certain film a lot more challenging whereas now i can make one cut i usually make a like right now i'm working on i'm looking at a rough cut version of just the visuals and i'm giving an audio version after that and i'm only doing that because it's easier to see stuff on a bigger screen that way in windows in windows movie maker i had to if i wanted to put in multiple tracks of audio if i wanted to put in multiple sounds do sound effects anything like that i had to press out i had to render out that entire bit of footage that i spent time editing and then edit it all over again just because i put audio into it premiere and hit film and uh, Lightworks, those are really mainstream things. Those uh, are free programs. Lightworks and DaVinci Resolve and HitFilm are all free programs. By all means, go out and get them. Uh, it's just learning curve. It's just getting in there, finding some tools, finding some tutorials, and understanding what the process is. But they're all set up very similar to this, except for uh, Lightworks. I've only looked at that. I got scared and I ran away. But um, if you want to try and try it out and let me know how that went, I would love to hear it. Jumping back into Premiere, though, you are dealing with the timeline. You're dealing with um, what bits of sound you want to edit out, how much you want to leave in, where do you want to have your, your sections of where you talk, where you don't talk, the audio underneath that. Everything is a stat quality. If you have ever used Photoshop, it's using the same principles as effect. So what is on your audio tracks, they're all going to be sandwiched together. So audio is going to be just kind of this massive sound that you're all going to hear at the same time. But your video tracks, the video that is on the very top of the stack is what is going to be seen first so if you have different sections of of your scene play like everything uh, I've, i'm working on a photoshop piece right here but then if i drop a picture on top of it then i'm going to have i'm going to have another scene uh, there and i can't see what's going on underneath it so it, it's all based upon that kind of level so it's kind of like painting with video and that's uh what i think of it because i'm going in i'm changing and adapting manipulating and moving different things as i'm making these processes these changes the big thing that you need to understand is if you're getting into editing and making these for your students it can become addictive depending on your personality for me it's very addictive i love making movies I'm, i've always been a director in my mindset and i've always wanted to, to, to direct it's a thing i like movies I, I like cinema i love watching movies it's it's a thing i love kevin smith so if you haven't checked out him go listen to his podcast because I, I feed off of him so much it's i see so much of um, of what he has done in his lifestyle i'm very similar to that rendering there so rendering out a video is usually going to take time and a half of whatever you've already shot so if it's a 10 minute video 20 minutes to render out depending on the speed of your system and then uploading it can take three times that when you're uploading it to youtube now for me as i'm going through the process while i'm uploading it to youtube i'll pop into photoshop and i'll build my thumbnail so i'll grab a scene a still of the overall image or whichever one i'm working with i have a default dummy layout that i use which is the black screen i'll drop my picture in switch it off to a cider in the middle and then i'll go in and i'll change the, the wording, the font, just changing in the color. I try and keep the same font. You want to have that similarity in all of your stuff. That, so as you're uploading it, you're having that similarity basis in, in all of your stuff. Once that's saved, you'll drop that into YouTube. Once it's in YouTube, it's going to be stuck there. Make sure you pick, pick the right thumbnail. Uh, adding in those little elements into the description, making the, the, the title of the video just right, and adding in these elements and... As you can see right now, I've got 29% uh, of the upload completed, 30, 23 minutes left to do the upload. Grabbing a couple 
websites, web pages to add into this to finish up my thing. And then I'm just gonna finish that out. Uh, your video elements are the end screen here. You wanna subscribe, all that kind of stuff. That's those buttons. And then the last button there is the um, setting it as a premiere, setting it as a scheduled video, and that's it. And just hit finish and it, it does it, the rest of its thing on its own. So you just have to leave it up while it's doing its render and whatnot. So other than that, that's kind of a start to finish on one of my videos. I always encourage you guys to get out there and make stuff, get some cool activities done. And as always, so we're going to wrap up things as we usually do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there. Trying to encourage all the students around the world as much as we possibly can. Especially in this time where we need to come together as that community and make some fun, cool artwork. Don't forget that if you have a question, comment, or concern, you raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer my classmates. Get back with you guys and, and encourage you guys however I can. Again, we are a community. We are trying to learn right now. Uh, nothing short of love for everybody. Trying to get everybody on the same page so that all of our students are successful. Look forward to seeing you guys get something interesting out there. Take a shot at making these videos. Throw throw something up to me. Let me know that you made these videos. I, I would love to watch it. I always get some great ideas from you guys. And uh, as always, always, I will see you guys next class. Good luck. Stay safe. Later, guys.